Good evening everybody, welcome back as ever to Building Blocks, where we are, once again, continuing to program Minecraft mods live on camera. And uh, I have a slightly smaller guest than usual. Here we have Carol, of course, and here we also have Cranston, who is uh, my, my pocket pal. He is usually he is usually found in like my bag that I go out with for like when I'm going shopping or stuff, just like a little, little bit of a like travel comfort. And he's very soft. Very, very soft. And smells significantly less of chocolate than he did when I got him. And there's been some development since uh, the last time we saw this. So let me hop into the game view and you guys can have a look at how things go a little bit. So if I go to, let's say, Hive 2. That'll do it. Wow. 11 months. Thank you, Marsh. Well, 11 months total, two in a row, but still, thank you very much. So I've done a little bit of work on hives, teensy bit, not a huge, massive amount. Uh, we do have this new test right here, and if I place a rift in here, we should see a new block form. So we can see this is essentially a, re a, a reproduction of a... Uh, of like a branch mine, like nothing dreadfully too complex here, but a lot of this space, not useful, not useful. The creep that comes out of the rifts can spread into these, but it can't actually be in any way useful, so we need to really make sure that we just get rid of them. So, if I plonk this down, and would probably have helped if I'd done that before anything was about to happen, I am now confusion. I am significant confusion, because there are... there's... there's no rifts around here at the moment. That is the right one, yes? Oh, interesting, interesting. We may have encountered a bug already. We have indeed. <laughs> Somehow a command block is being cast as a rift. Aha, uh -huh, right, well, there's a good start. <laughs> I wonder what's causing this. Huh. Oh. Rift changeling apply class cast exception in a predicate that's happening in the changeling rift. Trying to think what could be happening here. Uh. Oh, I think I know what's happening here. Okay. If and we just do that, that should fix it. Okay. This code right here. Uh, it relates to when you place a rift near to an existing rift. So if multiple rifts are plugged together, then they should create a larger rift, which is, then produces a much larger hive. Uh, because the, it, it, it increases the area that the specific hive can occupy and load. Per can't make it today, so they've asked me to be their stand-in pun master. Oh joy. <laughs> what love. So of course to do that, it has to check for other extant nearby tile entities. Okay, right, well, let's reboot. <laughs> I must have coded that late at night. Hey, Dark Blue. We're not, like, five minutes in, and we've already found a, a breaking bug. <laughs> Hopefully this is just a quick one that we can fix. Yeah, that was evidently my mistake there. <laughs> okay. We should hopefully be able to, like, work this now. Bloop. There we go. Okay, much better. Okay. So there's a lot going on here. And I do have the, uh... Tick speed dialed significantly up, but this would be much slower by normal writ. So let's bring that back down to free. And if we look over the end of here, we can see what looks to be actual creep. And this is hive solid. This now replaces the stone or the stained clay, stained hardened clay and stuff that I was using in the procedurals. And it is a solid block. 
There is, it doesn't spread or anything. It is just what uh, creep will turn into if it has two or fewer open sides. So these all have at least three. So this, this way, that way and down there. So they are able to uh, actually recognize themselves as being sufficiently open. But uh, if they only have like the one or the two, then you get the you get the creep solid turning up. And if I can just sneak my way in here, there we go. Then we can actually get rid of this as well. And uh, then interesting stuff starts happening. So we see we've already got a little bit of it showing up there. And if I hop into game mode three, we can see that holes are starting to turn up. And if I dialect the tick speed a bit more, then we should see increasingly more start to happen. Or we should, if assuming I haven't made some kind of error again. Which I don't see in the logo, really. No? Okay, literally just the one? Interesting. Hmm. An odd evening we're having. Big fan of whiteboards, you find them quite... Uh, <laughs> Maybe I just need to make it, like, a standing thing that if the, uh, if the jokes are that bad, I don't actually, like, read it out. Oh, I betcha. Is that... No, but then that, that doesn't explain why that one happened. Hmm. I was gonna say, maybe there's, like, an extra tile entity here somewhere. Hmm. But, yep, yeah, this has actually, like, removed itself. It's very dark in here, but you can kind of see it there. There's no creep in there that's just, like, occupying the space. It's actually removed itself. And that is because uh, if you have creep that is out of range of any sufficiently large hive, then it will turn into dead creep, and then it will die. It will just vanish into thin air. And that is what's happening here. Dead creep can also be replaced by uh, actual creep, like the living creep growth, but uh, living creep will not grow if it is outside of the range of a hive. It'll just turn into dead creep. I wonder why we're not seeing anything happen here. Huh. Actually, is that because I'm in creative mode, I wonder? Yes, it is. I'm a dingus. Right, of course, because spectators don't necessarily load chunks. <laughs> Ish. A little weird, but neat. Good job. I mean, in my defense, I am quite tired today. Uh, you'll find out exactly why in a vlog coming up soon, coming up tomorrow. But I am quite tired today. So just for a better view, there we are. We have. Completely, completely consumed the area around here. And if we uh, wait long enough, we will actually start to see special structures coming out of the creep. That is uh, stuff like the uh, the the, net, the hive storages, as well as the uh, like egg spots, <laughs> the egg placement points. When Charming today got a new belt. Ooh, fun, fun, fun. Uh, doesn't look like we're gonna see any too soon. But let's keep an eye. Because I know they will actually turn up. Oh, there we are. So there's a hive storage. And <laughs> these need a lot of work, but they're here. They're they're fine. They they they're, they're they're a functioning like entity. They have a storage of item stacks and everything. Just don't have anything that puts them in right now. Uh let's see, depending on how this has drawn itself, this will be a hatchery. Because the room that a, any a room that contains the the rift itself is always a hatchery. Whoop! There we go. There's a hatchery right here. And you put eggs. You put eggy weggies right there. But now let us presume that we have done the unthinkable and we've actually sealed the rift. And very swiftly we start to see that significant portions of the creep are dying. And it's programmed to wait. It's like like. Pro or con, plus or minus, that kind of thing. Um, so that hive creep has a significantly higher chance of decaying into dead creep, depending upon the amount of dead creep that's immediately around it. And that means that whilst it can just spot up 
randomly around here. It tends more often to happen uh, in areas that have already got, like, dead hive around them. So if we dial it up just slightly, we can see they tend to more often than not patch onto each other rather than uh, just appear randomly. But and and uh, then shortly after they vanish entirely. So you can actually just watch the whole thing decay relatively easily. Pretty sweet. So hives are actually now like if you seal the rift, they actually clean themselves up <laughs> to a degree. Uh, you can see that the part of the back as well as the nests behind me are completely intact. There's still a little bit of cleanup work you had to do manually. But uh, if an area that you like gets overrun and you don't want it to be overrun, then there is now a means by which to easily clean it up. Of course, you can just, like, curtail, <laughs> curtail it all back by yourself, but then you have to do that every time it grows back. Oop, and the piece that was just under my feet is gone, so I'm just drop down a little bit. And getting just about there. So, yeah. Obviously, if you get rid of the rift, the area is not going to be chunkleted anymore, so it will have to be loaded for all of the decay to happen, uh, but the, the creep will stop spreading when there's no hive, so you don't have to worry about it too much in that regard. And just nail in the coffin there a little bit more. There you go. Fancy and fine. So there's just these uh, nesting points, so if there's any leftover eggs, they can still hatch. Uh, if there's any items, they don't just, like, drop to the ground and despawn by sheer randomness, that kind of thing. But, uh, yeah. So there's that. As you can see, they do share a lot of the, uh, creep, uh, like, components in their model. So they're able to blend in seamlessly with the creep itself. Uh, but that is the majority that's been happening hive side. There's still a little bit more to show off today. Uh, now, of course, fair warning. Next thing I have to show doesn't actually have, like, an icon, it's still a non-textured item, but, uh, it is, nonetheless, functional, for the most part. Hi there, how, how are you doing? Not 100% certain what you're looking at. I presume you're trying to enact one of your, uh, one of your, uh, special attacks, but if I right-click the witch, the, and they do that, they, they're not programmed to do that, that was just purely random. There you go. <laughs> that's that's weird. Why were you staring at the ground? I don't know. Uh, but we now have slightly blocked by Carol by uh, Carol there. Sorry, uh, a deviled egg. And uh, if we consume the deviled egg, we get this, which is a very work in progress uh, like GUI here, which will basically say consuming this item uh, will begin the witch pact, uh, removing any existing pact. So you have the uh, option to confirm, or you have the option to decline. If you decline, nothing hap- Of course. Uh, if you decline, nothing happens. If you hit confirm, it will actually set your details. So, and then it will take away the egg from your inventory. It's a red pill, blue pill situation. It's more of an are you certain? <laughs> like, click to confirm. Like, are you, are you absolutely certain this is a thing you want to do? <laughs> that kind of thing. Because you can spend a lot of time getting your packs, like, actually leveled up and whatnot. So if somebody gets, like, a top-tier pack and has never heard of the witch, and they find the witch, and they hit, they get the egg, and they just decide to eat it, then you don't want them to accidentally erase all of their work. So, yeah. Sell your soul to the witch, are you absolutely sure? We, yes, no. Exactly. Pretty much. Uh, there's another detail here, which is that the witch will only- that you can get more than one deviled egg out of the witch, but, uh, you can only get one per hour, or one per time that the witch is, like, loaded in a chunk. Uh, obviously you can cheese that to get a lot more eggs, um, but, uh, it is one per player per hour that the, the, the witch is loaded. And, uh, also, there is an, there is an additional property to the deviled eggs, which is that they have MBT data. So this one doesn't, but they have an MBT uh, factor called owner, which stores a UUID, uh, which is like the specific this exact player uh, kind of ID value. Um, and 
The ones that you get out of credit can be used by anybody. The ones you get out of the witch can only be used by the one that's clicking on the witch at the time. So you can stockpile a whole freaking ton of uh, deviled eggs, but only you will be able to use them. And what's more, if you're already on the packs that a given like egg is bound to, because you can also change them by fiddling with their MBT data, um, you in fact uh, can't use them to say reset your pact. If you're already on that pact, it will just not. It'll just auto decline essentially. So. You can't get to top tier, unleash changelings, realize you've hecked up and eat an egg to undo it all. <laughs> Local chat would sell their souls to the witch in a heartbeat more at nine. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I don't remember programming a tiny zombie into this. <laughs> I, I'm genuinely curious. Is that what I think it is? There's like one thing I can think of that that could be. Yes. Okay. So half of the witch's costumes right now uh, are still just this like zombie placeholder because uh, we only have the elf and the human one. Um, but all of them have specific sizes. So, one of them, the fox disguise, <laughs> is half scale, and that's what we're seeing here, because that's applied via, like, enum, rather than, uh, like, just a wholesale model. So, it's picked the fox disguise, which I have up until this point never seen it do, and it's rendering it at half size, which is creating a tiny zombie. <laughs> Okay, right, yeah, sure, sure, fine. Can I get the pressure plate back, please? Thank you. But okay, uh, so we've got a bit more bug fixing to investigate. Um, pretty sure we've gotten most of the kinks out. Ish uh, of mobs casting spells, but we want to make sure we have that actually nailed down properly 100% and that means it is time to pick a fight because I need to actually tell the witch that they have like an enemy to target so let me see we have the attack handler right there we want to actually add a thing I do we need to add a thing I'm trying to think I, I, I can't recall exactly what behavior is already baked in uh, and Okay, looks like we do not, in fact, have, like, attacked by built in. Heard of giant mobs get ready for tiny mobs. I mean, I'm sure there was a Gulliver's Island mod at one point, way back when. Some, like, D-list, like, YouTubers did some videos on it, I think. Like, shrinking down in a village of some kind, I can't remember. But anyways, uh, let me see. Entity zombie? Is that what I'm thinking of? Hurt by target. There we are. And if I try to remember, I want to say, no, we won't, we won't get in here. I think targeting is done in the optional? I can't remember. Uh, avoid applying hostile behaviors, such as target tasks. These should be added in init optional AI or by inscriptions. Yes, attacking is in the base AI. Actually, like, knowing who to attack is in optional. So we'll stick that in there. So hurt by targets should now mean that the witch can actually heck me up. Are you referencing what I think you are? I don't know. It depends what you think I'm referencing. <laughs> but okay, so. Archfey. We've got the healing parts. I've got so many values here added to a bunch of things here. So we've got attack cast spell. Within it are a number of, like, various things. So there is the, like, whether you can cast this spell if there's any existing castings of that spell around. Uh, there's whether you need to have actual components in your, like, uh, inventory or hand or whatever to be able to use them. Um, in specific, that's the material components of the focus component. Uh, being able to talk or move are separate things. Uh, I 
fairly certain I've gotten that part fixed from last week, so they can now actually cast spells, period. They're not treated as being paralyzed the whole time. That might cause some knock-on effects for other boss attacks, I'm not 100% certain. Ah, uh, and then we have a number of little different things as well. They're like, where do we target? It's on the floor, at our feet, generally, or like on a target, like the, the target, whether we have that target. Then we have like this class here called Fire Conditions, which is just basically a list of uh, static predicates that just say, from this particular boss, can this fire now? And I think most of them just use has target, just as a default. So, yeah, if you don't specify a target, then, well, a, a fire condition, then it has, just has target. So, it's made pretty much as streamlined and simple as I can. It still requires, uh, for the most part, some degree of writing down deliberately every single time that you want to use a particular spell, but, oh well. So in this case, it's actually telling it that they can only use the magic missile spell if indeed they have a target to shoot with it. So, let's uh, just take out the wall of fire for the time being, and let's see if our witch is able to start hacking me up. How do you check or change tick speed? Uh, tick speed's like... The, the 20 ticks per second you cannot change, uh, or at least you can only ch I think you might be able to change that in like server settings. Uh, the random tick speed, like what I was doing there to like hasten the demise of the creep, uh, is slash game rule space random tick speed, you can hit tab to auto complete it if you just type random, um, and then sets, like if you just send that as a command it will tell you what the tick speed is, if you then space and then add a number it'll set it to that, if that's what you're going for. I don't know specifically if that's available in 110? It's definitely available in 112. Uh, admittedly, I did <laughs> I did recently have to film in I think 1.8, I want to say, <laughs> but it was just whoa. Talk, talk about a blast from the past. That was from like three years ago. That mod back. And if you're a patron, then you got to see it all, and also get to continue seeing it all by virtue of a uh, a vod that is available only to patrons. But okay, here's our witch. They don't do anything unless they are attacked. I am liable to immediately regret this, but let's find out. Yep. <laughs> they are, in fact, attacking me with magic missile. And one of them is bugging out a little and is just, there we go, <laughs> orbiting me. <laughs> and continuing. Yep. So they glanced at me, and they're casting Magic Missile, and because they were looking at me when they finished casting the Magic Missile, uh, the system is actually able to say, Ah, yes, this is what our caster is, like, trying to attack. Oh, yep. Still, still going. <laughs> and I think we'll actually, by way of this, how this is currently set up, continue to do that, just even if I'm in creative mode. Let's find out. You gonna... Gonna keep trying to murder me? No? Okay, good. I need to heal up. Okay, now now I'm in survival mode and they're looking at me and I'm worried. <laughs> like I mentioned is 110? Oh, okay. Alright. Yeah. Uh, actually, let's go back to game mode 1 because I just have rings of regeneration. Bloop. And there we go. That should get my health back up. Lickety split. But okay, so yes, we have confirmed that that works. Uh, what's been happening? Ah, uh, we walked into a bug in like five in like the first five minutes that prevented me from showing what I was going to show. <laughs> but uh, other than that, we're, we've got uh, self-cleaning creep now. So if you seal off a hive, well, if if you seal off a rift, then the hive will just like dismantle itself over time, which is pretty sweet to look at. I don't know if I showed these off. I'm still- I still want to make these look more like Nitor from, uh, Foundcraft way back when. But, uh, they look pretty sweet. And we have- again, they've gone with the fox. Okay. I- I evidently really need to put together a fox model because this- 
This is... yeah. <laughs> At least I know that the fox model can be chosen. There's that. Uh, and we have shown off also Deviled Eggs, which are the item that you get from the witch that starts the pact with the witch when you eat them, and it asks if you're sure you're he if you're hecking sure you want to do this. The options of the options for which being nah, bro, and yeah, totes. Um, not literally, obviously. I haven't even translated them yet. Uh, and we have just verified that if the witch has an attack target, it will actually cast spells at them. So next question: What happens if we ask it to cast Wall of Fire? Translated from code speak, uh, trans translated from like, translated to local language. But okay, so it needs to have a target, and it is cast at the feet, and it is inverted, which is another variable that we can set in here, and it can only be cast once every five minutes. Let's see if they are able to cast this. Get a dusty Rowan pixel lying. Yep, we also have Carol, of course, our perennial guest here, as we all, and we also have a little stream pal here called Cranston. Oh, thank you for that, Dusty. Up to eight total now. Two this month balloon. By this time next year, you'll be indestructible. Okay, right, well, I'm almost definitely going to uh, regret testing this one, but let's find out. And then once we've gotten this done, we need to try and figure out what spells Archfey should have. Because the idea isn't that they kill. Or maybe we should make it like a last ditch thing of like, you have, they have power word kill, but it's like really low priority. <laughs> but okay. Game mode zero. You have one special attack. Well, one one attack, one another one's just healing. Yes, a, a fine selection of hats, I'm sure. No? Okay, interesting, interesting. You have me as your target, or you very well should have, considering I've punched you twice. Board of playing with you now, power wickle. I mean, sort of, yeah. Like you can, can make we could we could give them a like Either a high a high priority but like specific activation requirements, or low priority, and then I guess it just happens when they don't really have any over abilities to throw at you. Dusty no. Okay, so clearly there is an activation problem here. We need to find out what is preventing Wall of Fire from being cast. So no components, so it shouldn't be looking for material components of any kind, no duplicates, so it shouldn't be checking- it, it shouldn't be, uh, casting more than one of them. We didn't see it even, like, going into the head there, so there's a problem there. Uh, and once every five minutes when it gets cast, but we didn't see it being cast. So, let's see, is valid. Which, is, which determines whether or not a given attack can be performed by the given boss, such as due to enough valid targets. Yes. So if it doesn't allow duplicates, we check for uh, nearby entity spells, and we check if they have the same spell. So then we want to check if there's none available. Oh, wait. I wonder if that's... That is a bypass. Hmm. Okay, so if... Not nearby walls. That is empty. Then return false. So what that would have meant was it would be trying to cast it. If if there was no walls, it would be trying to cast it, whether or not it actually can. But we need to actually make sure the fire condition gets applied. But okay. Uh, so the next thing is we've got the casting out the casting behavior which is it targeting so you can have an idea of exactly what's going on and then there's the point of whether we actually can uh, can use it we cast the effect but that only happens if you can cast it which i'm guessing it couldn't for some unknown reason possibly it didn't have an attack target i don't know 
but we're, to, we're we're gonna find out anyway. Let's just find out if that quick bypass fixed it up. An alternative, like in terms of like power word kill, as 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 I last ditch is just like plane shift. It's like you've you haven't killed me yet, but I've already used most of my tricks, so I'm just going to send you to a completely different dimension, randomly. Like, I could, I could even give them, like, a white list of different dimensions to use, provided, of course, that they're available, because you can you can blacklist different dimensions from Plane Shift. Just so like, oh, uh, Pandemonium. Let's go there. The Eternal... The Plane of Eternal Fires. Hmm, sounds warm. Okay, we've got Wall of Fire casting. But I don't see it there, so there's still some kind of problem. Also, it's five. It's a five-minute to like cooldown, so bleh. Or torments, the, like the plane of torment. You want me to recreate torment from witchery? <laughs> Technically, Dusty, torment isn't part of this mod, but neither is pandemonium, <laughs> or currently the plane of fire. Okay, so we got- with the fire condition passed, the no duplicates passed, so then we got to the casting part, or rather we got to the actual perform part, and then it had a problem, because it found that it couldn't cast. So question, why not? What prevented the witch from doing that? Because... is it the casting components? Oh, I wonder if that's it. Hmm. Other casting components? Spell, wall, fire. Hmm. There are material components, which is gunpowder. <laughs> okay, that probably is what stopped them from casting it then. So that's uh, a, a holdover from before we checked uh, this part. So we actually want to just be adding it, asking it uh, that because that actually allows us to bypass the material components, if if we are uh, set for that. And everything else here should be fine. Should be, he, he said after like the first uh, bug that's prevented it from working. Just while this is booting, a uh, slight advance notice that I might end the stream early tonight. Um, I've got a little bit of like video editing work to do, uh, but I also have like a 10 a.m. like meeting that's like halfway across town tomorrow morning, so I need to be up early. And uh, so far, going out in a tropical storm has made me very tired, so that's a good start. But uh, yeah, I'm also having sleep issues again, so. If I have to, if I have to stop the stream early tonight, that'll be why. No dire emergency, just like I need to be up early. Good luck with that. Yeah, the 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 great thing I've noticed about that is um, that particular meeting is in regards to diagnosis for something that makes you really bad at dealing with schedules. <laughs> it's like, hey, you might have a, a like. A disability that prevents you from properly inter interacting and, and, and like working two schedules. Here's a really annoying schedule. <laughs> it's like, is this? Are you? Is 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 this part of the test? <laughs> Anyways, wall of fire. Well, it's there. They did cast it, but they don't appear. It doesn't appear to have actually done anything. Which is the slightly weirder thing. So what stopped the wall of fire from generating the fire? Oh lordy. Yesterday a clown held the door open for me. It was such a nice jester. Like the the, the blue like tiefling girl? Hmm. It's nice, I guess. 
So we cast the spell. It was def the, like the the entity was spawned. So then the only thing that could happen is a problem with the code for Wall of Fire. So spell Wall of Fire. Okay, what happened? You're supposed to get your stay here. Uh, your segments generated. So, do effect start is the thing that actually places them all. So, what happened there? Uh, this looks mostly fine. Hey, Firefly. How you doing? Hmm. I'm guessing it did a ray trace from the caster. Maybe that was the problem? That the witch looked away immediately after? Hmm. Oh no, Firefly. Hope you're okay. Hmm. Also, if you're like. Se secondary feature here of the uh, wool family of spells is that you can target a position. You can also just, uh, if you if you have it inverted, which is usually like surround, then you can also just look at an entity and it will surround them. So let's just have a sis out here. classes got dropped from university? What? <laughs> like, you were dropped from all the classes, or all of the classes just ceased to exist and a whole bunch of people are out of it? Like, what? That seems... bizarre to me. Also, isn't university something you pay for? I feel like you might have some consumer rights to, like, discuss with people. financial aid not going for. Can you afford it? Is the next question, I guess. Is there a problem with getting the owner, maybe? Like, if, you can, if it was just, like, delayed or something, you can probably talk to somebody about that, because that does seem like BS, Firefly. And I've been in a similar situation before. There's usually somebody you can talk to. For clarity, Firefly, I... There, there was a, dis a distinct period for like a, a few weeks to a month, I forget which, from like when I should have started my final year to when I actually started my final year. Because there was a point where they like lost a decent chunk of my coursework and thought I didn't do it at all. So then I argued with them and they low key legit actually like blackmailed me. 
And then I started my my uh Then I started my actual course. Okay, so yeah, it looks like you weren't quite there. Hmm. So what happened? The wall found its owner, good. Uh, target point was valid, so it was generating. Wait. Does that mean there's just like where were you? You're looking over that way. I'm kind of curious now. Has it just generated a wall of fire somewhere in this direction? Somewhere distantly in this direction. Both of them should be, uh... It's... Criminy. What is the... What, what is the, sp the casting range? <laughs> when, you're, when your caster level is... Uh, what was it? 30 for Wall of Fire. Casting time... Range is medium. So, medium is... 100 plus 100 feet plus 10 feet per level, so that's another 300. That's 400 feet into meters, because that's an actual calculation that we do in this mod. That's a long ways if they're actually over that way. But okay, let's do a little bit more testing. But yeah, like, literally in the meeting to discuss my, uh, potentially going back to finish my, like, degree, um, they legit actually scoured my Facebook page, printed off a number of, like, well, even just, like, I think it was just literally the one comment that I made, which was in reaction to that whole thing happening, and slid it across the table at me, saying, you know, some people have, like, some people have been uh, released from their have been released from their university commitments because of statements like these i was like you're trying to buy my compliance with a threat oh that's the definition of blackmail pity for you i was on a criminal like cr like a, a, a i was on a like a criminal law course before that one <laughs> So li literally, like, legit actually, I looked down at it, passed it for a second, and said, Are you trying to blackmail me? And they were like, no, no, no. And I was like, yeah, I'm pretty sure you are. <laughs> it's like, by, by that point, I did have an HNC in digital forensics. I legit knew that this was blackmail. <laughs> and they were just trying to pass it off. Ay, ay, ay. But that whole meeting was a farce in and of itself. It was a miracle I got anywhere. Like, they had, um, I'm trying to remember, the, <laughs> this is a completely aside from, like, programming, but, um, they had, like, two representatives from the, like, school, essentially, and then there was me, and I was allowed one person, which could be either a representative from the student union, or a parent, and I figured a representative from the student union would probably have been the better idea, because they're the student union, and they're supposed to represent the students. It hadn't occurred to me how much money the university gives to the student union <laughs> at the time. Uh, so yeah, the, the rep from the student union was a complete patsy, who was not the least bit on my side. <laughs> so I was mostly representing myself against free people. <laughs> in that meeting. Again, it was a miracle I got anywhere. But I, in, in the end, I just had to, like, submit the coursework that they had lost in their system, whilst also doing my final year. Like, literally, there was a good few months where I was supposed to have already picked my final year project, and I didn't know if I would actually be allowed to complete it. Like, that was a great work environment. Yeah. <sighs> Yeah, there's a number of reasons I wasn't hired on my university degree, but... <laughs> but okay, so... We know that they can find the owner, so they know that they can aim from the owner. We know 
that the point that it's looking at is valid, apparently. So next we need to check if... We, we need to check the points that it's generating at. So we have a spawn circle is one option. Is the option, in fact, that we're using. Spawn the wall segment at that position. Let's see if it gives us anything. Because there are some outs there. Some preventions. Some quality assurance, you could say. You have a headache? Oh dear, Dusty. Is there some, like, paracetamol nearby? Actually, wait, there's- I know there's an American thing for it. There's like an- there's like an American brand name for paracetamol, and I can't remember what it is. <laughs> Para- what? Okay, uh, I, it, it's presumably different in the States. Hang on, let me see if I can find out what it's known as. Uh... Acetaminophen... Which is probably not gonna help much. Let's see what is what is what's what's a better name for it that you might know. Acetaminophen is the name generally used in the United States, Japan, Canada, Venezuela, Colombia, and Iran. Paracetamol is used in international venues. Uh, British approved name. In some contexts, such as prescription bottles or painkillers, they incorporate this medicine as if it is APAP. Acetyl para amino phenol. So, if that helps. Panadol is one option, apparently. Tylenol. There you go. <laughs> That's the one. Do you have any Tylenol? <laughs> You've heard none of those names? Not even Tylenol? Really? Hmm. If we can get- we've gotten magic missile working, which is a big important thing, but if we can get the wall of fire working, we can get things like wall of force working. I keep forgetting that you won't target me. Oh, there you go. Apparently you will, and apparently you did. Well, that worked, but I think it hit the owner. <laughs> Or actually, no, where- how did it get to this point? Should have been targeting at your own feet. Oh, that's what Wall of Fire is? What did you think it was? <laughs> yeah, it is a Wall of Fire. <laughs> like, they, they use this to rob a significant effect in Critical Role currently. <laughs> Oh, right, you're not immune to fire, are you? Forgot about that part. I should maybe have a caveat in Wall of Fire to, like, not deal damage to its owner. Uh, oh, right. Not creative. There we go. Phew. Yeah, the Wall of Fire is actually an entity, so it can spawn in, including water. Um, and then it will it, it will ignite you no matter what altitude you hit it. <laughs> Unlike regular fire, where you can jump over it, theoretically. Not easy, but you can. Okay. So there's evidently some interesting stuff happening. But we did get the wall points spawning, which is good. So, how did it pick that location, is my question.
Plus next questions can't do that reliably. Oh, sticks? Yes, sticks. Okay, back in 10, everybody.
and welcome back everybody. So, just before we left off there, we were continuing to tweak things to try and find the most consistent, I guess would be the phrase here, uh, way to have the Archfey cast a Wall of Fire spell. There's a lot of spells they can cast that are just look at the target, but we want to make sure we actually have that capacity to fine tuned in, and also if we do it makes it much easier for us to add these kinds of spells to other like, non-Archfey mobs that might be a bit more aggressive in their application of them. <laughs> so, uh, we've confirmed that our wall can find its owner, which means it knows, it, it can figure out which way the owner was looking, that kind of thing. From there, we can in fact determine, uh, like, what target points the owner was looking at, and apparently there we had some problems because it put the owner about, like, along the wall, so that wasn't good. Yeah, so consequently the, uh, oh, the, uh, the, the owner of that particular casting of the spell was also in the fire, and also we don't currently have a means of telling the standard mob navigator that, uh, you shouldn't walk in the fire. So we probably need to, like, in like, just ensure that the walls don't actually just deal damage to them. That's probably fine. We can have, we, we can have the wall of fire deal damage to the players, just I mean, fine. No, like, if, if, if a player casts Wall of Fire and stands in it, then yes, they should burn alive. Um, but mobs, we need to be a little bit more forgiving, because they're not that smart. Uh, <laughs> like, if it, if it wasn't for the if if it wasn't that Cactus had a hitbox, then mobs would gladly stand in Cactus. It's just just the way they are. Uh, but okay, right. Wall of Fire. Let's uh, make let's find out what point you were actually looking at there. Or what point it thought it was actually casting it at. And Ken is trying to climb over you. Yeah. Roasting the mobs today? I mean, I'm an AI programmer. I'm always roasting the mobs. I make a lot of very intelligent systems, but, uh, the AI of Minecraft are not very smart, which is fine, in fairness. On the level of the vanilla game, they don't have to be. Like, on the level of just regular old classical vanilla gameplay, mobs don't have to be that smart. Maybe it's because I punched you into a wall? Was that it, maybe? Hmm. Let's just, uh, get you back over here. Blump. Okay, something went wrong there. What does our log say? Generating wall around the position, negative 248, 4863. So, game mode 1, TP, negative 248, 4863. Where does that put us? That puts us here. Okay. Why didn't the wall generate, is the next question. Because we clearly don't see a wall here at all. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. There's definitely some, uh, some interesting stuff happening here. So let's see, we go to spell wall. We can check the circle formation. 4.5 meter radius. Hmm. I wonder if... Hmm. Is there a break in here? No. You're wrong. Dusty again. You're really not slacking on this, are you? Okay. Shout out to the people who ask what the opposite of in is. Shout out to the people who ask what the opposite of in is. Yep. <clears throat> so if the point is valid and we don't contain that. Point is valid and we don't contain that. Yes, okay. So what? I don't see anything here that would cause an early out. 
Like, this should generate an actual full circle. And the only thing that could stop it from doing so would be is point valid. Pearl gave you a job to do? I mean, yeah, you got me there. So if point valid says no, then it should just not add the segment. It should then continue. So why does it not? Hmm. By the by, the way this is coded specifically is so that it um, starts, well, it, you get your point ahead of that 4.5 meters. Um, it's like from the direct, in, in the same direction that the uh, caster was looking, uh, it then starts working its way around. The idea being that uh, if you're looking at somebody when, to like surround with a wall of fire, then it starts in the direction they're fleeing away from you. It also means if you're running towards them, and they're putting it on the ground, then it appears between you first, rather than, like, some arbitrary direction. Which means it's- it, it increases the likelihood that it does what you think- what you want it to do, essentially. Ah, <sighs> but why are we not seeing it actually place it? That's the question. Like, let's check is point valid. What are the values here? So, if the position down does not have a solid up, say no. Uh, if it's not, if, if there's a solid block at that point, say no. Um, if we do need to uh, pay attention to entities and we ask if we can place a stone block there, then yeah, that should all be good. Hmm. Blood magic so grindy? Yeah, that's pretty much all the blood magic is as a grind. A grind into absurdity. Though not nearly as much as draconic evolution, dear god. Okay, so... Hmm. What is this out here? That's going to be a lot of spam down here, but it should give us at least a check of whether or not it's generating a full circle. Like, it definitely did that one time. We saw that happening. If we can't get this uh, fixed and functional by like half past, then uh, I will get to work on a little bit extra beyond what this was meant to accomplish. Because it may simply just be that I'm not awake enough for this today. Who knows? Okay, so it did try to generate the whole circle. You can see that down there. And the position for it was like a 246, 4863, which is right here. So it definitely should have been able to find some points. The question is, why didn't it? Hmm. Hey, Amy. What happened there? The only thing that could possibly have prevented it from functioning at that stage would have been is point valid. Let's also ask it what actually got added to the wall positions. Because if that comes out as being empty, then we know nothing got past is point valid. If it doesn't come out as empty, then we know something happened with spawn segment. A 
essentially we are trying to take a system that was built not exclusively but dominantly for players to use and we're trying to actually like uh, like grease the gears that make it actually function for mobs. Sure, now you work. Okay, so that gives us a whole ton of positions. We know it generated the whole thing, or tried to at the very least. And the root of this is negative two four six four eight six three, which is basically exactly where we wanted it to be. I'm presuming the I'm, I presume it just hit this armor stand, and that's why it's actually put it here. Let's reboot that, and also get rid of that part, because we know that part's, that, that part's no longer relevant. Uh, but let's reboot and see if it works again, because it seems to be unreliable, and we don't really want it to be unreliable. Like, if they're, if they're casting this spell when it should have an effect, you never want them to be using an ability that has no function. Try to learn how to do redstone stuff, it's interesting at least. Ooh, enjoy. For some, I don't know why this has just popped back into my head, but um, there was an episode of a show called The Panelists a while back in which there was the question of whether you take a chunk of like radioactive material or a cursed amulet which kills everyone that comes near it. And then there was the like sensation of maybe these are actually the same thing. Maybe the cursed amulet is actually just radioactive, that's why everyone dies. And that spawned an entire, like, concept for me as to, like, a campaign in which your characters are tasked with transporting this object that is slowly killing them. Um, unfortunately, since the release of uh, Chernobyl, there's no way in hell you can get away with saying you taste metal and they will not know immediately that it's radioactive. Why do I... You don't appear to have caught, captured anything, sir. I should really dial it down from, like, five minutes, shouldn't I? Hmm. Could you wander out of the corner, please? Just just so that I can actually like access it. Try to my face on the X. What's Z? So we're at B4, play, play, four. There. Okay, it did generate a list of positions. It just didn't actually place any of the fire, it would seem. Next question. Why not? Why did it not generate that? And the coordinates are 2524862, which would be right here in that wall. Okay. Mm -hmm. Hey, Para! Good to see you. So it's generated all of the positions, but it hasn't actually spawned the segments. Okay, so there's something in spawn segment that is actually causing it to not happen. So very tired. I know the feeling. I know the feeling. 
If we know it is generating the seg the points because they're valid, then it should be spawning the actual like entity there. The only way it could be generating the positions and not spawning the entities is wait, hang on, not world in is from yeah, that's fine. Okay, that's correct. Yeah, the only way it could be doing that would be if the world it's being given is client side only. Hmm. Yeah, Dusty has already chucked in about 150 bits <laughs> into different puns. I don't know if I'd necessarily say they're good puns, but are puns necessarily good? Do puns necessarily need to be good? Okay, so what... what creates this problem? Zaki, hey! Good to see you. With Twitch Prime, too. Gotta love that good old Bezos money, because Lord knows he doesn't need it. So what? Hmm. The only way it could be adding the position, but not spawning the segment, would be if it's a remote. Like if, if it's if it's client side. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Just find out you got accepted for a job that's pending your, then, your, then your factory job. Nice! Grats! Let's try this. See what the specifically client side parts actually have been getting. Because wall positions should be, in essence, a list of places that it that it has put the wall segments. So if there's a list of positions but no wall segments being spawned, we know there's a problem. I mean, we already know there's a problem because it's very inconsistent as to whether or not this spell does anything, but either way. Like, there's no ray trace, so it shouldn't have to worry about, like, running into stuff. Like, you, put, you could theoretically put this inside of a block and it, should, it, would, it should still be fine. Why do you like that pressure plate so much? Do you long do you long to escape cap captivity? Is that it? Okay, yeah, we have a list of positions, and there they are. Um, yeah, that's that's definitely a, a list of positions here. I'm now stuck in here with you, aren't I? Hmm. Okay, so if we. Firstly, get rid of that one. Yeah, no, I need to... This is why I need you out of the corner. <laughs> like, could you... Grr. Give me... A command block. And a button. Uh, let's see, where's the roof? Over here. Uh, there. Two. Maybe two, five, two, four, eight, six, eight. There. 
You stepped off the pressure plate because you know I you knew I was programming the command. Didn't you? <laughs> Don't think they like being trapped? Well, tough. <laughs> it's kind of their thing. Okay. Refresh, because every time that you, uh, every time that a creature with boss attacks is, like, lo unloaded and loaded again, their, well, their whole thing resets. So I could give them, like, a five-day long cooldown and it will just stop. Oh, hey, we got, uh, we got the elf. It's not perfect rendering, I know. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's good enough. And they glow in the dark as well. But okay, so once more. Today went good. Good to know. I had to go out into a uh, significant storm. Okay, it spawned. Has it placed anything? Apparently not. Okay, so why did it not get to the point of spawning the circle? That is the question. We didn't even get to point. We, we didn't even get to the point of generating wall around position. Hmm. So it could be it couldn't find its owner, or it could be its its current position didn't exist, which is also unlikely. Or the point that it was at was not a valid point. Hmm. Now I think, honestly, that might not be a useful thing, because that's the position where the spell itself is. That's where the that's where the object is. Oh hi. They leave this trail like pretty much wherever they go up to like five random positions. I tried some. I tried getting them to just actually affix to the world, but then I end, ended up with so many problems. So I just it's it's just random positions you know, more or less. Can be completely off grid. Elf costume is pretty. It's supposed to be. <laughs> ah, but let me see. If its current position is null, or the point it was uh, placed at, oh, the point it's targeted at is not valid. That I hmm, feel like that should be. Not that, that, this should only really be relevant for uh, wall style because walls are the only ones that are going to place things directly on that point. Circles have to be around it. There's a reason that the position of the spell and the position that the circle is around is different. It's so that you can cast it and then not be necessarily yourself surrounded by fire or just walls of force or such. It's like it's so that you can. Uh, it's it's so that it, it makes it a lot easier to entrap somebody else essentially. Like, the spell appears near you, and then you, where you're looking is that is the origin point of the actual wall. So, let's see. Not is inverted spell. Source entity. And, so if it's not, if it's a wall, not a circle, and it's not a valid point, then you can return. That's, that shouldn't cause any problems, I think. In fact, at that stage, I can just guarantee that that's going to be, like, false. Because if that's false, then here, then that becomes true, therefore we check that. Ah, uh, but let me see, yeah, the, uh, the witch has four current known costumes, I'm probably be adding a fifth. Um, and the two that are functioning right now are human-ish with split jaw and whatnot, that's the one we've been seeing most, because it's the, the, the highest weighted. Um, and uh, the elf, which is the one that glows in the dark and leaves that trail. Uh, the two others that I need to implement currently are uh, the fox, because there has to be a fox, let's be honest. <laughs> um, as well as the crone, which is meant to be more emblematic of the witch's appearance early on in Witch in the Woods, when they were still 
uh, they were, when they were fresh out of the well, as it were, or still sealed in it. It's the implication of, this isn't a beautiful creature you're helping out, this is some kind of horrified, decayed monster. What blocks did you decorate your blood altar with in terms of blocks? I don't know what you have access to, Marsh. And you probably shouldn't list the contents of any eye into the chat. That might be spam. You, you, you need to do the thing. Why, why aren't you doing the thing? Hmm. Interesting. I wonder why it suddenly stopped. Hmm. Like, we didn't just- we didn't change any of the variables in regards to casting it, that's weird. Oh yes, Para, you weren't here earlier, so you don't know. We have eggs now. We, we have deviled eggs. They're a thing. They work. <clears throat> also, because uh, you can absolutely put, um, you can you can create your own pacts and put those into like the the data uh, for like server or whatnot. So you can there there's a data tag inside of the deviled egg and whatnot and other similar items that'll be coming in the future, uh, which allows you to change what pact it binds you to when you eat it. So the default for it is just the witch pact, but you can change the other rings. Oh, night neck. Okay. Are you gonna... Why, 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 why? Why, why have you suddenly stopped doing the thing? Because that's there? Oh, that must be it. Okay, so it's detecting this... Spell this this spell entity right here. So it doesn't think it so it thinks there's already it's already cast one. Okay. Looking a bit more like it's working, I think. Right, I need to actually have it- I- I- when it's doing that check for no duplicates, I should make sure it actually checks if it's the owner. Not just, like, uh, anybody casts Wall of Fire, no one else can. <laughs> but okay, let's, uh, refresh it. Hey, Dark Knight! But okay, good. We're making good, we're making good progress here. I am, however, nonetheless true to my word, gonna stop uh, working on this momentarily. Yeah, I'm definitely surrounded by fire now. Oh boy. Yeah, this seems to be much more reliable. Hooray! Okay. Should I have another pop package of pop tarts for dinner? No. <laughs> I'm the only one allowed to cast Wall of Fire. Well, huh? Yeah, exactly. Like, if a player comes along and casts Wall of Fire, then it means that nobody else can cast it. <laughs> Which, maybe that shouldn't be the case. Okay, yeah, that looks like we got that going. Anything else there? No, good. Yeah, I think we got that going neatly enough. I mean, the next thing is just to check where it's aimed, I guess. Okay, so... Next question! 
Now that we have sufficiently confirmed that our mobs can cast spells now, with a one or, with one or two caveats that maybe need tweaking, um, the next question is what spells should they be able to cast? Wall of Fire isn't necessarily an evergreen thing, like I don't think all Archfey should be able to cast that, but also, uh, like, the main thing of these shouldn't be to kill the player. Like, the point of an Archfey essentially is that they're a god you're more likely to actually interact and deal with. Um, they're not- if you attack them, you're screwed and there's not a single chance that you stand. Um, but that shouldn't necessarily mean that if you accidentally punch an Archfey, you should die. And lose all your experience and all your items and all sorts. So, a lot of it should just be... You can try, and they'll, like, paralyze you, or encase you, or teleport you away. Like, a lot of these should be more disabling than damaging. So... I don't have every spell I intend to put in this mod in, in like in the list yet, but we do have a fair variety of them, suffice it to say. So we can try and figure out which ones we'd like to include. Wall of Force seems an obvious one, so swap that out from uh, Wall of Fire. A freeze spell? Uh, we probably can do that, honestly. Like, Wall of Ice is already in here. Web might just be too much of a mess. It does get rid of its webbing once it's done, but... Mm. Uh, silence seems an obvious one. That'll also reduce the incidence of actual spell casting. But, like, there was... Um, there was an incident in Dungeons & Dragon Hats fairly recently. They all, the party is undermanned, but nonetheless all level 9. Uh, and they went against a group of, I don't know what possessed them for this, but about 20 to 25, like, level 5 characters. A decent chunk of which were spellcasters. And basically, the uh, near entirety of the party got taken down by two spells. Silence and Darkness. <laughs> Silence, which I think was cast on the Bard, and Darkness, which was cast on their wagon. Which then resulted in... Basically, nobody could attack. <laughs> and it was that kind of, like... What exactly is this mod? This is, um... It, it's described as the as the monster manual of Minecraft. It, it's in main intention is to add a wide variety of new, interesting, and uh, visually, like... Uh, unusual kind of mobs. So we've got goblins, we've got kobolds, we've got trolls, we've got giants, uh, we're adding whales in the near future, that kind of thing. Cr giant crabs, all sorts. Um, and that also means that we're we're, we're we're taking a lot from Dungeons and Dragons, almost everything in fact is from Dungeons and Dragons, um, and in order to really make the gameplay interesting beyond just here is a large number of creatures, all of them approach you at a decent speed and punch you. Um, we're adding a variety of new combat effects and as such to allow you to, to, allow, to allow more uh, diverse combat scenarios and as such. Uh, but yeah, like we don't need to go high level, high power to make uh, to, to disable players. Like that's actually not that uh, not that necessary. Uh, what level is even silence? I figured. Let's see, silence is level two. There are nine of these levels. Ten if you include epic level spells, which I am not implementing. No matter who asks for it. Can you add Displacer Beasts, Big Kitty Cats? Unfortunately, I think Displacer Beasts might actually be copyrights. So I don't think I legally can. Surprise visitors, they normally visit on Wednesdays, but they have work then? Oh, I'm, I'm guessing you don't mean a cat cam. But yeah, uh, yeah, let me blip, link the thing. It currently says 112, but we will be, like, upgrading to 114 in the relatively near future. So I think Power Word Blind, 
And I forget how Power Word Stun even works at this stage. I think it just makes you nauseous for the most part. Oh right, no. Power Word Stun also knocks your items out of your hand. I forgot about that part. And it also, like, specifically sets what the pickup delay is. Level 10 spells from D&D, like Floating Mountain? Yeah, not adding those. <laughs> Tenth level spells and higher are absurd, and I will not be adding them. I, I have enough trouble trying to figure out how to actually add, like, wish. Which is something I will have to figure out eventually. But yeah, if you cast Power Word Stun, um, what's the phrase? Uh, is it Expelliarmus or something? From Harry Potter that just like knocks their wand out of their hand. Uh, it more or less does that. Uh, but it also actually like sets the time it takes to pick up the item, whereas normally you'd be able to pick them up much sooner. It sets it to about six seconds. Doesn't get rid of your armor, but it makes makes you drop what you're holding. Because it's like, Ugh. And then it also gives you nausea and slowness. <laughs> just to just to really make that uh, effective. That's probably a good one to include. So power word stun and power word blind. Let's add those two. That's that's a pretty disabling set of things. I'll mark that as an inverted so that it's actually like an enclosure. Force cage, I guess, could also be along the same lines. Except that it's huge. We can make it the smaller version, but it's still fairly big. Oh dear. <laughs> I'm only friends with 25 letters of the alphabet, I don't know why. Uh. Yeah, if you want to raise an entire mountain, then my advice is check out Britannia, because they still have that. And you had a run-in with the various oddities troll last night. Do let me know what you thought, because I'm always looking to make these guys smarter. Uh, let's see, flesh to stone? If we use flesh to stone, however, then they will be immobile forever like there's a lead up time but flesh to stone will paralyze you eternally until you decide to die that's like how i had to do the balancing of like well if you turned to stone and you're in a single player world literally there is no way that you can stop yourself from being turned to stone um there is a low grade magic item that you can apply to remove the effect before it takes full hold uh, but otherwise, you are, you, your only option is you're just stuck in this menu, and you can do a few things, but one of the main things is that you can just succumb, essentially, and just respawn, losing all your items. That, well, leaving your items back there, I guess would be the more specific way of putting it. So, that, that's how uh, petrification works in various oddities, which I think is a decently, like, sound thing. If somebody else comes along with that low-grade item or spell magic of some description uh, and applies it to you, you can be, like, resuscitated. But if you're in single-player, that's not an option. So I had to think of, how do I do this without bricking every single, uh, like, hardcore world <laughs> the second you go up against a Gorgon or, so a a Gorgon or something? Uh, it was tough, it would have been worse if your base, the island part, wasn't a bit can uh, compact and cluttered. Oh, right, yes, one of them spawned in your storage room, didn't they? Oof. The only good thing about my failed water hive search was seeing all the crabs and kobolds. Water hive? Oh, you're referring to bees. Right, sorry. We've done a lot of work on hives for changelings recently, so I was confused a little bit there. Uh, what's it? It feels like first level. Don't know if that's necessarily... Hmm, just adds weakness one. Disintegrate. Just, you there. <laughs> Screw you in particular. I feel like self-invisibility should also be, like, a thing. No, it has water bees, no diamond bees. Okay. Night, dark blue. Magic circle. Oh, that'd be- that would be evil. They cast- they like- they tar- they target you with it. They cast magic circle where you're standing. <laughs> Targeting you. <laughs> You're just then, like, chained in place, like, okay, what now? <laughs> now they're just going to slowly peck you to death with magic missile. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, old monster. It would also be, obviously. And... Okay, I don't... <laughs> I could cast Plane Shift on them, but then they're just probably gonna go into an unloaded chunk and be done anyways, so... It's more just like... This, this is the spell of battle end now. Repulsion, perhaps? I forget exactly what that affects. And indeed, if it can affect players, is the next question. Yes, it can. Okay. Repulsion is a, a decent option, actually. Yeah, let's add Repulsion to the list. Okay. So that's all the spells that we currently have implemented that we can add to, like, this list, essentially. But here's all the spells that we could potentially implement. There's a fair few you might have noticed. So now we get to go through this and figure out which ones could actually be of use to our... Uh, to our Archfey. Lullaby? Uh, I think that just puts people to sleep. Uh, any creature within the area that fails a will save becomes drowsy and inattentive, taking a minus by penalty on listen and spot checks, and minus two penalty on will saves against sleep effects while the lullaby is effective. The lullaby lasts for as long as the cast concentrates, plus up to one ramp per cast level thereafter. Not great. You can only concentrate on one spell at a time, in addition, so it's not... Mm. Also, we don't have concentration built in, currently, I think? I can't recall exactly. I don't think we do. So, yeah. <laughs> Come, little children. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> so, yeah, we're looking for things here that are good for uh, immobilizing or dis otherwise disabling a player. Uh, or otherwise just, like, defending the Archfey um, in ways that make them... Not necessarily impervious to harm, but very difficult to harm. And I guess one or two can actually be damaging things. Just generic and damage types, like Magic Missile, for instance. That's a fairly obvious one. You still go back to On Infernal Wings, listen to the song only. Wow. <laughs> so, let's uh, see... Uh, was one I just spotted out of the corner of my eye, what was it? Refuge. Create a powerful magic in some specially preferred object. Contains the power to instant transport its possessor across any distance within the same plane to your abode. Not as helpful as I thought it might be. Hmm. Ah, uh, Resilient Sphere. Oh, that's an obvious one, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, let's go for that. Let's add Resilient Sphere. That is the classic orange sphere engulfing, like, the party while they camp for the night. Kind of spell. Mm. Irresistible dance. That sounds very, that sounds very archfey, doesn't it? The subject feels an undeniable urge to dance and begins doing so, complete with foot shuffling and tapping. The spell effects make it impossible for the subject to do anything other than caper and prance in place. The effect imposes a minus 4 penalty to armor class and a minus 10 penalty on reflex saves, and it negates any AC bonus granted by a shield the target holds. The dancing subject provokes attack opportunity each round on its turn. Well, that's, that's, that's a level 8 spell. But you get access to level 8 spells at level 15. And the cast level of Archfey is 30, so we can have a few big ones. Don't know exactly how we'll implement Irresistible Dance, but <laughs> that would definitely be an entertaining one. That's very Fey. Uh, in fact, that's, that's enchantment. Let's just actually filter down to enchantments. Characters start shifting uncontrollably. Yeah, you're just moving randomly and you can't attack for whatever reason. <laughs> you're just Your attack is just constantly on cooldown or something. Oof. Wouldn't that be rough? Uh, binding. There's a possibility. It's a magical restraint to hold a creature. Target's initial saving throw. Binding spell has six versions. Oh, this would be fun. 
I currently only have like binary. You can only have you have one version or another. I need to add multiples. That actually does sound fun. Okay, let's add binding to the list. Uh, watch at least seventy percent of my content at least twice. Hmm. Why? <laughs> Who, who hurt you? <laughs> uh, feeble mind? Mm. Feeble mind is really difficult to actually implement because it only affects intelligence and charisma scores, which are roleplay scores. Uh, it's very easy to affect physical, so like to, to create physical effects in Minecraft code because you deal with that as a player, but uh, intelligence, charisma, wisdom, these are all role-playing effects in Dungeons and Dragons, for the most part. Uh, they do have actual in-game consequences. If your intelligence or charisma or whatever is uh, low enough, then you can't cast corresponding spells. That's about it, though. Um, there's no way to have Steve Minecraft be ca like be feeble-minded and then actually act like they have low intelligence. Beyond, I guess, maybe not allowing crafting? I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a weird one. But also this, like, the subject remains in this state until a heal limited wish, miracle, or wish spell is used to cancel the effect. Don't know that we want to be tossing that one around. May have rewatched The Return and Haunting twice in one night. I can't imagine why, Dusty. <laughs> Ooh, hideous laughter? That's similar to dancing. That's very similar to dancing. Did you watch the second latest episode? What happened in the latest episode of Dailies by Daylight? Uh, in the latest episode of Dailies by Daylight that came out today? Or the one before that? The one that came out today was, uh, Plague's Midterm. Which is, which, which is in short what I call every time we're, we do a match right before prestiging somebody. Yeah, Hideous Laughter and Irresistible Dance seem like a beautiful combination for Archfey. Oh, like to me? Um, just sort of post ruin meta, essentially. Like the 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 devs are pretty much on record as saying that they have an extreme bias towards survivors, except that there are also killers in this game, and they are also played by people. <laughs> so it just sort of. Uh, <laughs> it's it's frustrating because they keep making development decisions that adversely affect killers and just flat bonus survivors. Like they're not they're not even hiding it at this point. They're just actually that biased. It'd be like if the Team Fortress Two devs had an overt bias, like actual in-game play consequences to whether you played red team or blue team. Which they slightly did, but more as a joke. It was less like, if you are on blue team, then your sentries fire faster, and your rockets, like, shoot faster, and your minigun holds more ammunition. That's sort of what's happening with, uh, with Dead by Daylight, unfortunately. It's very irritating. Okay. I, we've, we're getting quite a list here. I want to add a couple more here, though. Especially of interesting ones that we can find. Um... Can the s symbol spells be cast? I think those actually do need... Yeah, casting time is 10 minutes, so that's probably not gonna happen. Those need... Th those need, um... What's the phrase here? Premeditation. <laughs> that's the words. I was just digging back into my lore background. <laughs> <laughs> trying to think, what's the word for that? Hmm. This spell causes those in the air to turn on each other rather than attack their foes. Each affected creature has a 50% chance to attack the nearest target each round. This you can do for mobs almost only. There are some potential ways to do this to players, though, but it involves essentially changing how everybody else renders. So, 
uh, there's been a couple of, like, insanity effects in modded Minecraft over the years, and one of them was, uh, instead of rendering players as players, render them as random mobs. So, this guy now looks like a creeper, this guy now looks like a skeleton, this guy now looks like a zombie, that kind of thing. Except, they don't do anything? Um, like, and especially if you're in comms, if you're on, like, Discord or TeamSeek or whatever, then it's very easy to say, like, I'm to your left, I'm the zombie, because you have to make it a consistent mob or else it just flickers randomly. Um, so that <laughs> makes it somewhat difficult to have, like, deceptive effects like this. Like, the best way I could think to accomplish this would be to do that, have, like, your friends, whatever, start to look like the witch, and then also shuffle. But they can still do comms relatively easily, so it's not... Hmm. Has phantom mobs that cause damage but no one else sees and they don't do mob griefing. Yeah, there's a better one for that, actually. It's called Phantasmal Killer. <laughs> Which actually illusion magic, I believe. Hmm. I don't think there's very much else here. Touch of it easy. <laughs> I love that sympathy is magic. Let's see, where are you? There you are. Phantasmal killer. Like Curse of Insanity, but worse, uh, essentially. Like, there's not really a great way to do deceptive stuff like that when people can actually talk to each other. Like, when you're in D&D, &D, you tend to just, like, forego the, fact the factor of I can say words and the other players will know what I'm saying. Like, there's a degree of, um... You have to be in the RP moment, essentially, to panic. <laughs> Anyways, I'll be back in ten minutes, everybody. See you in a moment.
and welcome back everybody to the last probably half hour because I'm very sleepy uh, of building blocks where tonight we have fine-tuned and gotten working the existing spells that we had for our arch fae so they can all cast this every arch fae imaginable can cast these spells they can cast um, let me see what was it magic missile and they can also cast wall of fire which still needs a little bit of tweaking just to be perfectly safe and sound but we are now assembling an arsenal, to say the least, of various magical effects, because Archfey are very magical creatures, and they have access to a great wide variety of magical abilities. Some of them specific to different Archfey, others more universal and to be expected of basically all of them. And a lot of them intended to be relatively, like, illusory and messing with your mind and whatnot. Uh, is the server down? Uh, heck if I know? Don't know how I would have had time to check that, but I will give it a quick poke, just to be on the safe side. So, we have assembled Force Cage, Inverted Wall of Force, meaning Enclose Somebody, Silence, Powered Stun, Powered Blind, Greater Invisibility, Self-Cast, so they're just invisible with no particles, Hold Monster, Repulsion, which will repel even players, Resilient Sphere, Irresistible Dance, Hideous Laughter, and Binding as our last thing here. Uh, and with regards to your question, Cam, the server is... currently offline. Could you give me a while to find out why? Oh, wait, Sakura was online? Sakura, were you by any chance on... in, in the Twilight Forest? <laughs> because the server appears to have just, like, timed out from what I'm seeing here. I'm seeing a lot of components for Twilight Forest. <laughs> Anyways, I digress. So I've got a couple more spaces here. <clears throat> I think this list is all spells we already have. This list is spells we can implement in a reasonable fashion. And I figured we should, we should add a few illusion spells. Now illusions are somewhat handicapped right now because when you're casting the- when you're using the attack, the name of the spell, like, decodes itself above your head. So there's no current way for you to discreetly cast a spell that, like, does an illusion, essentially. Because players will know, ah, that- that thing appeared, it's not real because I saw the spell name, essentially. Sakura flying again, I mean, YC is a whole bunch of generation and Sakura moved too quickly. But that could also be related to lag spike from generation. But okay, so. Mirror image is an obvious one. We can do that very easily. Several illusory duplicates of you pop into being, making it difficult for enemies to know which target to attack. The figments stay near you and disappear when struck. Very easy to do. Very easy. We can, man we can manage that. We we'll need to make a custom entity for it. But very easy. So let's add that to our list. Essentially, we're making a list of spells here that make it very difficult to kill the Archfey, but don't necessarily kill you. These are disabling and, like, disruptive kind of spells more than they are. You are dead now. Too bad you shouldn't have taken a swing at the, like, Lord of the Forest. That kind of thing. Got a distinct feeling that it'd be Wolf from breaking the server if, you were, if he was on. I mean, you're not wrong. Hey, Marsh. Ble oh, right. I, for a second, I wondered what evening you'd had there, Marsh, but no, you actually are referring to blood magic. A spell makes a lock or a small mechanism seem to be trapped. Hmm. Not very useful in combat, I'm afraid. Phantasmal Killer is an interesting one, but uh, don't know about that necessarily. Nightmare... Is it the one I think it of? Send a hit. Yeah, that's... Just makes it so you can't sleep, which could be entertaining for certain, like, purposes, especially with, uh, phantoms now implemented, but... Mm. Let's see. Mirage Arcana. Again, it's a pretty interesting thing. Uh, Simulacrum takes, like, ten minutes. We're looking for, like, things that, be ca that can be cast in a combat situation, essentially. Uh, there's no, like, casting filter here, so we just have to go through them all. Instantly change the appearance of the subject and then maintain that appearance for the spell's duration. Not useful. Illusory Wall. I haven't implemented Illusory Wall. 
but we could certainly, like, do that relatively easily. The major question, of course, is if they create an illusory wall that doesn't look like an existing wall spell, like Wall of Force or Wall of Stone, then they'll probably just realize that it's like the, I mean, I guess if you're unfamiliar with Archfey, they might you you might think it's an actual wall that they've summoned that just happens to look like legit actual terrain, but uh, I don't know. I don't know. A wall, floor, ceiling, or similar surface. So we're going to be, if, if we did make that, we'd probably have to make it rotatable. Physical objects can pass through without difficulty. When a spell is used to hide pits, traps, or normal doors, any detection abilities that do not require sight work normally. Touch or a probing search reveals the true nature of the surface, though such measures do not cause the illusion to disappear. Oh, more from Dusty. 6.30 is the best time on my clock. Hands down. Uh... Shopping, dinner, bleed under stones, bedtime. Hmm. Let's see, Shadow Evocation and Shadow Conjuration are both just spells that later do different spells. Uh, with a chance to disbelieve them. Uh, weird? Weird is an interesting one. Uh, spell functions like Phantasmal Killer, except it can affect more than one creature. Only the affected creatures see the Phantasmal Killers attacking them, uh, though you see the attackers as shadowy ships. Basically just multi-targets, Phantasmal Killer. Shades, is that what I'm thinking of? Shades, Seeming, and Screen. Uh, Shadow Conjuration, set the main source for wizards of eight levels or lower. Functions like Disguise Self, except you can change the appearance of other people as well. It's combined several elements to create a powerful protection from scrying and direct observation. Again, not generally very useful. Hmm. Yeah, I don't think there's very much here. Displacement might be something. Yeah, the subject of this spell appears to be about two feet away from its true location. The creature benefits from a 50% mischance as if it had total concealment. That could be very useful, actually. Hmm. Yeah, sure. Let's uh, put that on. Displacement. That could be very useful. Hmm. Especially if it teleports to, like, if it, if it plunks it where it was and then teleports them two meters away. Was it two meters or two feet? Two feet. What does that translate to? A little over one block. Hmm. But I think that's basically all of the... Like, as I say, there's... There's limits to how effective illusions can be in-game here, outside of roleplay. But, uh, I think that's a pretty decent list. So our list is Force Cage, Wall of Force, both of which are for caging the, uh, target. Silence Power Words, uh, Blind, both of these make it much- well, Silence makes it nigh impossible to cast spells. Uh, Power Word Blind obviously makes it very hard to actually, like, attack anything. Power word stun, if we put that on like a relatively low cooldown, will make it difficult to keep hold of the things you're trying to hit them with. So if you have like super powerful stuff, then good luck. Invisibility greater uh, means that they are invisible and they do not have particle effects, so you'd need some kind of special way to identify them at that point. Uh, although I I think I've made sure that the, that the like witches, trails, and whatnot don't activate if they're- it don't get rendered if they're invisible. Otherwise, that might be quite obvious. Uh, hold monster, paralysis, temporary. Repulsion keeps you away, so again, melee has troubles. Uh, resilient sphere can be cast on it or a target, so that would mean that you are now impenetrable, but good luck getting out. Uh, irresistible dance and hideous laughter, very fey-themed kind of stuff, basically just make it impossible for you to coordinate properly. Um, Binding has a variety of effects, most of which are basically prisons. Mirror image, so there's just now several phantom witches walking around. Uh, and displacement creates one phantom witch, but also like one block to the left or whatever, so you have to figure out which one's a witch when you're attacking. Which can make- which can buy the witch some time, for the most part, while their abilities are on cooldown. So if they're trying to cast repulsion, for instance. So, all of that pretty good. Obviously we're gonna have to have some pretty, like, robust validity conditions on these attacks to, like, say, okay, we can cast this, but it only really works against spellcasters and there's a melee brawler, f like, three feet from us. 
So, yeah, there's that. But I think that's pretty. That, that's that is a pretty like nice list of things. Um, Force Cage should probably be higher cooldown, lower priority than Wall of Force. Um, but they are functionally like, the same in terms of like discussion, like destructivity. I guess would be the phrase. But let's, uh, you've seen Force Cage. The larger version of Force Cage is the one that the witch has been in. It's the one with bars. Um, if you make a, if you invert it, at least I think it's inverted. Uh, I, might, I may, the inverted one might be the one we've been in, but the uh, the one without bars is significantly smaller, uh, which is probably the one we'll have them use because it's freaking huge. <laughs> Otherwise. But yeah, let me just show off how big Wall of Force can get. Wall of Force, I think, doesn't have a ceiling, so it's more useful for people because they can counter it, for instance, with uh, Ender Pearls. Or, theoretically, a Disintegrate spell. So let's see you, Wall of Force. There you are. Uh, and if I... Okay, yeah, this one does not have a have a secondary, so it can't actually invert it. It creates a temporary impenetrable barrier of pure force. Also, you need to be holding glass in your offhand if you uh, if you want to be casting this normally. But there it goes. That is how big it gets. <laughs> I cast a level twenty. It's pretty pretty big, pretty big. Oh, we've got Fox. <laughs> we've, we've, we've got Fox Zombie again. Whereas the Force Cage... Let's see. Uh, surround the target with position within an escape enclosure of pure force with optional bars. Uh, yeah, I think that's the standard one I want then. Blump. So there's the bars. Pretty, pretty big. And away they go. But if we switch that to alt fire, it is dramatically smaller. And this one over here has been rendered uh, permanent by way of MBT data editing. I don't actually recall if force sketch can be made in fun, made uh, in made permanent by default, but we haven't actually implemented permanency yet. I do like the look of that. It has been, it's a bit of a noise spam, but it looks really nice. Uh, let's see what else was on the list here that I have. Mm, not terribly much, really, that we can show off, unfortunately. But yeah, so we've got a list of spells there that we can make. And they're going to be very entertaining, I'm sure. Binding has bind, binding is going to require that I finally sit down and determine how to have more than two kind, more than two versions of a given spell. Like, that's, that's going to be entertaining. That's going to be fun. Because that, that's a thing we've probably been asking, we've been in need of for a while. Because there's a lot of spells that have, like, one state or the other state, but a lot more have much more variance to them. And a few of them we've managed to implement that by, such example, as the teleport spell. You can actually, it, it opens up a GUI so you can enter coordinates. But uh, some of them, not quite so useful in that regard. But... Anyways, as I say, I, I, did, I mentioned this in the first hour tonight, I do have a very early morning uh, appointment to achieve, and I also happen to have sleep issues right now again, from like, before Christmas again. Um, so I need to like get a little bit of quick work done for like the vlog, and then I need to go to bed. So uh, that is what I have for you tonight, I hope you've enjoyed. So you now have a pretty decent idea of what you can, of what you're getting into when you go up against an arch fay, um, even if not all of it is at present actually implemented. So to summarize, arch fay have 300 health, 20 armor, which is a full bar. They also have cast level 30 for all spells, spell resistance 35, which means that even if you are max level at 20. Um, they still have a pretty decent chance of avoiding any spell that has that allows spell resistance. And then they have all of these spells to throw at you. They're not invulnerable, but they are pretty damn close. <laughs> Especially because if they buy sufficient time, they can just cast their Archfey heal. Like, it's got a pretty decent cooldown on it, but... Oy. But anyways, 
That is all I have for you tonight. My next stream is, believe it or not, tomorrow at 7 p.m. GMT. We'll be reviewing the second campaign of Dungeons and & Dragon Hats, and I will be a player playing the Warforged fighter Artifice who can see the future. And then on Thursday at 9, we have some Monster Hunter World, followed on Friday at 9 with some more Dead by Daylights. Mostly try to take it easy, because the game is not great right now. Uh, and then on Saturday we have the main campaign of Dungeons & Dragons Hats 7, followed by some the Carousel with some random games at 9. I'll be back for more of this on Tuesday. Meanwhile, I do make videos over at edo.com slash comic, and everything I do is powered by people like you over at Patreon at patreon.com slash lying. Thanks to your support, I am able to do all of this stuff full time. Partially because no one else would hire me. Uh, but nonetheless, you guys make my life so much easier and so much more feasible in general. And none of this would happen without you, so uh, thank you for that very much. Other than that, hope you all enjoyed, and I'll catch you all as ever next time.